for saving me. Thank you, God, for saving me. Rescue from the middle of the ocean deep. Rescue from the middle of the ocean deep. You set my feet on solid ground. You set my feet on solid ground. I once was lost, but
Let us recite the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and seated on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Universal Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. will help you and your everlasting kingdom. Even through hardships, we will continue to praise and worship you every single day. We give you our love and our esteem. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Today's word comes from Jonah chapter 4, verses 1 through 11. And it says this, But it displeased Jonah exceedingly, and he was angry. And he prayed to the Lord and said, O Lord, is this not what I said when I was yet in my country? That is why I made haste to flee to Tarshish. For I knew that you are a gracious God and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and relenting from disaster. Therefore now, O Lord, please take my life from me, for it is better for me to die than to live. And the Lord said, Do you do well to be angry? Jonah went out of the city and sat to the east of the city and made a booth for himself there. He sat under it in the shade till he should see what would become of the city. Now the Lord God appointed a plant, and it made it up over Jonah, that it might be a shade over his head, to save him from his discomfort. So Jonah was exceedingly glad because of the plant. But when dawn came upon the next day, God appointed a worm that attacked the plant, so that it withered. When the sun rose, God appointed a scorching east wind, and the sun beat down on the head of Jonah, so that he was faint. And he asked that he might die, and said, It is better for me to die than to live. But God said to Jonah, Do you do well to be angry for the plant? And he said, Yes, I do well to be angry, angry enough to die. And the Lord said, You pity the plant for which you did not labor, nor did you make it grow, which came into being in a night and perished in the night. And should not I pity Nineveh, that great city, in which there are more than 120,000 persons who do not know their right hand from their left, and also much cattle? This is the word of God. Amen. Hi everyone, happy Sunday, I hope you guys had a great week. Last week we studied Jonah chapter 3, and in this chapter we saw a new man, a new people, and a new king. We saw that last week something changed the people in Nineveh, something changed 
Jonah himself. We saw Jonah be obedient and faithful. We saw the people believe in God. And we saw the king of Nineveh even believe in God. Last week, we learned something great changed them. And it wasn't their work. It wasn't because they did some training program. No, boys and girls, the word of God changed them. We learned that the word of God, the word of God, his message, his power, his words has power to change us. Remember how bad Jonah was, how disobedient Jonah was? He changed. He became more obedient, more faithful, more devoted, and more thankful. We see that Jonah last week preached a very simple sermon, saying that Nineveh will be destroyed in 40 days because of Nineveh's sin. But what we saw is those three people change. They change their ways from evil because of the word of God. Remember that the city of Nineveh is 50 plus miles wide. So it's a huge city, a massive city. But we saw that everyone changes their ways away from sin. But they didn't change through force, like I said. The Word of God changed them. We learned that the Word of God has the power to change and transform lives. And even in the people of Nineveh and the king who aren't even from Israel. We saw that people who aren't even part of Israel and the old Old Testament kingdom people change because of the Word of God. They changed so much that God showed mercy and He actually didn't destroy the whole city. So chapter 3 was a pretty great story. We saw Jonah do well and we saw the people change their ways and they were forgiven. They were given a pass. God decided not to destroy them even though that was the original message. But here we are in chapter 4, our final chapter. If you guys have your Bibles open, Jonah is probably only on two pages for you. And this is the last section of the book. Now, knowing how good last week was in Jonah chapter 3, you think there'd be another happy ending. Actually, quite the opposite. You see, Jonah chapter 4 is very different. If anything, Jonah chapter 4, we see a Jonah that isn't like the one that prayed in the, in the fish or the one that obeyed God's word. In chapter 4, we see the Jonah from chapter 1, the one who disobeyed, the one who ran away, the one who was not doing his job as a prophet. You see, the ending of chapter 3, we saw that Nineveh was not destroyed, was not killed, was not wiped away. And someone wasn't happy with that. Someone, if you consider these last two weeks of study, surprised us, surprised us with his actions this week. And it surprised us in a bad way. In our final chapter of the book of Jonah, Jonah is angry. Weird, right? I thought this guy changed and was acting like a holy prophet of God once again. But that's not what's, ha what's happening. In this final chapter, in this final chapter of this book, we see two things. One, we see Jonah's angry heart. And two, God's forgiving heart. So one more time, we see God's angry heart. And we see God's Oh, we see Jonah's angry heart and God's forgiving heart. Now, let's begin with our first point today, Jonah's angry heart. Like I said, last week in Jonah 3, we saw good news. Everything was happy. Everything was good. The message to Nineveh was that they would be destroyed because of their sin. But thankfully, fortunately, they all changed their ways. They started believing in God, worshiping God, repenting of their evil ways of sin. And God spared them. He actually didn't destroy the city. So isn't that good news? Isn't this a happy story? Isn't this, you know, something you'd feel good about if you heard it yourself? This was the last verse in Jonah 3. When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil way, God relented of the disaster that he had said he would do to them, and he did not do it. In other words, when God saw that the people repented of their ways, these Ninevite people, God decided not to bring disaster. But here is a verse right after that final verse in chapter 3, the first verse of chapter 4. It says this, But it displeased Jonah exceedingly, and he was angry. Let me read it together, the last bit of the last verse. Um, and God relented of the disaster that he would set to do to them, and he did not do it. But it displeased Jonah exceedingly, and he was angry. <laughs> what? Jonah is angry that Nineveh wasn't destroyed. What, what's going on here? Isn't, isn't this good news? Isn't this a good thing that, you know, they believe in God and they, they 
they change their ways and they want to believe in him and worship him. This is good news, right? Most of the time in the Bible. But for some reason, Jonah is very angry. And honestly, he's kind of being a jerk. What moves on, Jonah moves on to not only explain why he's mad, he moves on in chapter 4 to even explain why he ran away in the first place. Why he went the total opposite direction. He explains why he's mad. And Jonah prays this in verse 2. It says this, And he prayed to the Lord and said, O Lord, is not this what I said when I was yet in my country? That is why I made haste to flee to Tarshish, for I knew that you are a gracious God and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding steadfast love, and relenting from disaster. Boys and girls, Jonah is mad because God is gracious, merciful, slow to anger, abounding in steadfast love, and relents from disaster. Who says that? <laughs> Jonah is saying, I am mad at you, God, because you're loving, because you're kind, because you're merciful, because you show grace, because you decided not to kill everyone. Why would Jonah is mad at that? Jonah is mad that God is being a kind and loving God. And boys and girls, how ridiculous is that? I thought this guy changed, right? In chapter 2 and chapter 3, this guy was a happy, worshipping, devoted guy. But here in chapter 4, that's not the case. We see an old Jonah here. We see the Jonah that we first saw when we began studying this book. We didn't, we didn't see him pray. We don't see him obey. We see him be angry at God. To add on to this craziness, he says this in verse 3. Therefore now, O Lord, please take my life from me, for it is better for me to die than to live. Jonah is saying over my dead body that you actually save Nineveh. Jonah is saying to God, I'd rather die, I'd rather be killed than you show mercy to Nineveh. You guys see how ridiculous this is? How confusing this is? Jonah is out of his mind. He's such he's being such a jerk at this time. And he is this angry that the whole city was given something great like forgiveness. This is so confusing. Who else and I want to ask you guys this, who else was given forgiveness? Who else was shown mercy and love? Whose life was spared even though that person deserved death? Jonah Jonah's here being a little baby, a little brat, saying, God, how could you save them? They messed up. I'd rather die than you save these sinful people. That's what Jonah's saying. But you see a problem here? Who else was sinful? Who else was forgiven? Who else was given a pass and another chance to be faithful, to obey, to trust in God? The guy who's speaking right now, Jonah, Shouldn't he be glad that God is doing the same thing for Nineveh, forgiving them for their sins, just like God did for him? Absolutely. Absolutely. This is a weird, twisted scene. But here we are with this little baby, this brat of a kid. He's probably not a kid, but he's certainly acting like one, saying he'd rather die than watch God forgive people. He'd rather die than watch God forgive people. A sinful people. And I realized here's why. Here's why Jonah is so angry. The city of Nineveh, boys and girls, is not Jewish. They weren't from Israel. They weren't of Jonah's kind. See, Jonah was mentioning this in his home country. He knew in his home country that God would show mercy. And here is a really big problem. Boys and girls, Jonah only cared for himself and his own people. And who is his own people? Israel. Israel. And Nineveh is not, not a part of Israel. Jonah didn't care about whether strangers or non-believers died because they're not my people. That's what Jonah said. How terrible is that? Jonah isn't only saying that he's mad at him forgiving other people, which is already crazy. Jonah says here, I am mad that you are forgiving people who are not my people. Jonah is being a jerk. 
Jonah is saying, oh, they're different, so they're not like me. So they don't deserve your forgiveness, God. That's what Jonah is saying to him. How terrible is that? So how does God respond? How does God respond? And God tests Jonah in a very unique way. He asked Jonah this in verse 4. And the Lord said, do you do well to be angry? In other words, God is asking, are you doing any good by being mad right now? That's what God says. And this first scene ends just like that, with an open question. There's no answer to it from Jonah. And here, through this next scene, we see our second point today. First, we saw how angry and, and what Jonah was saying in his heart. Now we see, in our second point today, God's forgiving heart. The first scene ended with that open question that God asked, right? And here in the setting, in the second passage, moves on to outside the city of, of the city walls. It says this in verse 5, Jonah went out of the city and sat to the east of the city and made a booth for himself there. He sat under in the shade till he should see what would become of the city. This dude is so annoyed and immature that he left the city watching the walls, watching the city from afar to see if Nineveh gets destroyed. He's like, all right, God, I'm going to go sit and watch. Let's see what you do. Jonah is that angry, that annoyed, that frustrated. Here, But here we see God do something very interesting, boys and girls. You see, this was a summer in this area, in Nineveh. And the summer in this region got really, really hot. This past summer here in New York, it's been a lot, a lot of rain, a lot of heat, a lot of humid. I hated it. Sweating all the time. Jonah here is also probably sweating all the time. It's really hot at this time of the year. There's no air conditioning like there is today. There's no fans or anything like that at the time of Jonah. But our passage says that God raised a large plant with giant leaves to give Jonah shade. How nice. And the dude was happy. It said he was exceedingly glad. God had given Jonah a plant to give him shade. However, the next day, it said that God sent the worm to eat up the plant's core. And not only was a worm sent, God sent a hot wind and sun to beat on Jonah's neck to the point where Jonah faints and there's no more shade, no more protection. This happens all within two days. Jonah got so fed up and said to God again, I would rather die than live, God. But here, boys and girls, God tests Jonah one more time. And it says this in verse 9, But God said to Jonah, Do you do well to be angry for the plant? And he said, Yes, I do well to be angry, angry enough to die. This time, Jonah is mad again. Yes, he's angry again. But he's not mad at God. Exactly. He's mad. He's not mad that the plant isn't there anymore. He's mad because the plant withered away and died. He's not mad at the plant. He's not mad at the worm. He's mad that the plant had died. All right, so what is this whole story about with this plant or worm coming and the heat coming? What is this all about, the second scene? What's up with this plant and Jonah saying he'd rather die again because of this dead plant? Here's the point, boys and girls. Jonah was mad that this plant suffered and died. Jonah was mad that this plant suffered and died. But notice this, this is the opposite of how he thought of Nineveh. This was the opposite of how he thought about the people. Instead of being mad, sad, brokenhearted, and angry that Nineveh might have to die, Jonah was mad that Nineveh got to live. He did the opposite. Jonah should be so worried, especially as a prophet of God, that people might die by the wrath of God. But instead, once the people were spared and given forgiveness, Jonah got mad. Jonah got angry. But look at what God says in the last two verses of our book in chapter 4. It says this, And the Lord said, You pity the plant for which you did not labor, nor did you make it grow, which came into being in a night and perished in a night. And should not I pity Nineveh, that great city, in which there are more than 120,000 persons who do not know their right hand, from their left, and also much cattle. Boys and girls, God is saying that the Ninevites don't know better. God is saying that 
They're not Jewish. They're not Israelite. That's true. But God still loves them. God still cares for them. God still forgives them. God is still their father and creator. Here in this final chapter, boys and girls, we saw two hearts. First, we saw Jonah's very angry heart with a bunch of ridiculous reasons to be angry. And then we see God's forgiving heart. Yes, the people of Nineveh sinned. Yes, even Jonah sinned, but God forgave them. One was angry, one was forgiving. And boys and girls, what I want to show us today, once again, isn't that, ooh, Jonah is bad, don't be like him. Please don't be like him. But at the end of this book, in chapter 4, boys and girls, we can be like Jonah. We can be angry and frustrated and annoyed and immature like Jonah. That sometimes you and I are Jonah. Sometimes you and I can leave people out, ignore people, be angry at people for being different. That's what Jonah was doing. He wasn't simply mad that it didn't go his way. He was mad that strangers and foreigners were forgiven by God. Jonah was like, hey, it should be just me. But Jonah is showing so much, so much immaturity, so much anger. He's saying they're different, so they don't deserve what I have. And I want to ask you this, is that right? Is that a good way to act? I hope you all said no. Jonah was acting like this, leaving people out, ignoring them, the non-believers, the foreigners. But boys and girls, you and I are all one people, created by God, boys and girls. And it doesn't matter what personality you have or how different we are, but we see that even here, even though it's the Old Testament, God loves all of His people. Amen? God loves every single person. Why? Because He created them. Yes, they're not Jewish in this book. Yes, they're not Israelite in this book. But God loves them. God loves them, loves them, loves them. No matter how different you and I are, boys and girls, no matter how different maybe your friends are, no matter how different other people are that you, maybe you walk by or drive by, you and I are all one people and God has forgiven us. Just as he forgave Nineveh, Christ has forgiven us for our sins upon that cross. Sometimes we'll have hearts of anger, boys and girls. We will. I'm sure you have already had it. But God always has a heart of forgiveness. So let us not ever forget this. That in this book of Jonah, yeah, we saw some failures. We saw some accomplishments and victories and successes. But at the end of the day, boys and girls, may we look to our God, who is loving, who is forgiving, who changes us through the word, who hears our voice. This is the God we have. This isn't a book just to show how bad you are. <laughs> Maybe it is for you. But this book, this book of Jonah, as we finish our study today, shows us that God is loving, God is forgiving, and that we are all one people, and God loves us so. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word today. God, we finished our study of the book of Jonah. And we saw a very unexpected scene, a very angry scene, a very ridiculous scene. But God, even through this story, even though Jonah had gone back to his old sinful and disobedient ways, God, you show forgiveness. God, you show love. That God, you said these Ninevite people don't know better, but they are still my children. But they're still mine. That they're still my creation. So, Father, we pray. May we never forget the love you have for us, the price you paid for us. Lord, how far you'd go to comfort us, to bless us, to show love to us. So, Father, today as, you know, we have VBS tomorrow and all these things coming up soon. Lord, may we never forget this truth. The Lord, you love us day in, day out, morning and night. So, God, we love you. We praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We will now recite the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Hey guys, announcement time. This week we have a few announcements. Our first announcement is a very, very, very happy and great announcement. Boys and girls, VBS is beginning tomorrow. Woo! It's finally here, the end of summer, and VBS is going to happen. But I do have a prayer request. Boys, girls, mothers, fathers, please pray with us. As you guys know, there's a hurricane today, and it's not too great. And hopefully you're seeing this in the morning. But can you please join us, the pastors, the teachers, everyone else in the church, as we're praying that the weather gets better so we can begin our VBS program. If there's any changes, we'll let you guys know. But let's keep praying for a dry, safe, and fun VBS program where we get to worship God, be with God, learn about God, and be with our friends in Christ. So uh, hopefully we see you guys tomorrow. Let's be prayerful until then. Our second announcement is that next week, next week is our graduation service for our fifth graders. Now, as you guys know, every year we have an annual graduation service and guys, our fifth graders are moving on. I've had the pleasure of being with you guys for almost a full three years and it's really sad to see you guys go but our fifth graders are now becoming brothers and sisters no more boys and girls you guys will be called maybe big boys and big girls but whatever it is next week would you celebrate with us 4 p.m 4 p.m is a graduation service fifth graders you guys will get a separate announcement because we got to do some things but boys and girls and families our service next week will be at 4 p.m in the main chapel for a graduation service and lastly our final announcement is that next month, uh, we're going to do some changes. We'll let you guys know exactly what's happening, but this might end. <laughs> you guys will probably not see this anymore in a few weeks. You guys might not see me in, uh, in this great quality <laughs> anymore. But um, guys, it's been a long, long time as we've been doing this together. And hopefully, we're going to be in person 100%. So keep tuned, stay tuned for any announcements with that. We will let you guys know. That's it for this week. I'll see you guys next time. Let's pray for the weather. And we'll have a great VBS program tomorrow. I'll see you guys next week. Bye. Ivan Yarin. Bright, 8월 23일부터 3일간 펼쳐지는 퀸즈장로교회 BBS에서 모두 꼭 만나요. BBS를 위한 도네이션을 받습니다. BBS를 후원하시기 원하시는 분은 헌금봉투에 BBS 도네이션이라 쓰시고 봉헌해 주시기 바랍니다.